The following program is brought to you by Whiteman TV. Welcome. Welcome and thank you for your commitment to our community by joining us this evening. Your investment of time and thought as we prepare to elect our next council is a testament to the community involvement and support each one of us appreciates. I'm Diane Cook, and it's my privilege to be this year's president of the Center Wellington Chamber of Commerce. I have lived in Fergus for seven years and have been building my own small business in Fergus for three. I've been a member and volunteer on the board of directors for the Chamber of Commerce for two years. Giving back community involvement and volunteer opportunities are the cornerstone of our community, and the results are immeasurable. We each appreciate all that makes our community what it is, and the only way to ensure the continuation is to support our local businesses. Before you head to a big box store or order online, please take a look to see if a local business has the products or services you seek. If you're not involved in our community in an organization or municipal government already, please take a look for a place to plug in. Come alongside, support, lend a hand, give back, and make a difference. Tonight's all-candidate meeting is being hosted by, oh, sorry, sorry, hosted by the Centre Wellington Chamber of Commerce. Our vision statement is helping business to navigate success to achieve a grand community. We would like to recognize and thank our community media for their coverage of tonight's proceedings. Thanks also to Jeremy Woods of ICS Computers for his assistance with audio tonight. Township staff are available tonight to answer questions about the voting process. Our moderator for this evening is Janet Harrett. Good evening, everyone. Again, my name is Janet Harrop. My husband, my son, and myself run a uh, dairy farm business just north of Fergus. It's nice to see so many people here. The Chamber is pleased to host this evening's All Candidates meeting. As we are now in the active period for the upcoming municipal election, this is a good time to remind everyone that the Chamber is a nonpartisan organization and the board and staff do not publicly support or endorse any candidate at any election level. Uh, we are simply hosting the meeting. The board does not endorse, does not encourage, does encourage full engagement in the political process and fully encourages all members and stakeholders to get out and vote on October 22nd. As Diane had mentioned, when you entered the Legion, there were, you were greeted by the township staff. If you're unsure if you're on the voters list or um, if your address is correct, please um, stop by and ask them to make sure that you're on the list. The process for this evening's um, can all candidates meeting, all of the candidates will have two minutes to introduce themselves and state their platform. Introductions were done, drawn, there was a random draw, and uh, the opening statements will be by draw and in reverse for the closing statements. I'd like to direct all the candidates to the monitor in front of them uh, that has a, a timer, and uh, it will start to count down. Uh, it's set for two minutes for your opening statements, and you will have one minute to respond to any of the questions. Recognizing one minute is not a lot of time, um, but we do want to try to get to as many questions as possible for tonight, so um, it will somewhat force your answers to be somewhat succinct. And if you can just keep an eye on that at the end of the uh, time allotment, um, if you are still speaking, I will ask you to stop. As in previous all-candidate meetings, we have asked for and received written questions from chamber members and the public. Uh, questions from the audience also need to be written. Uh, we have taken this format. It just allows more time for questions and more time for responses. If you need, um, there was papers when you came in. If you need any papers, there is a couple volunteers over here and Roberta, and you can drop your questions off there. Recognizing that we did receive several questions before this evening's um, event, and we did ask at the bottom that people include a email contact so that if we don't get to your questions, that uh, there's an opportunity for us to send them to the candidate you're directing your question to, and they can respond directly to you.
recognizing, again, the uh, number of candidates, it is a, a, a large group of people, and we do want to um, allow as many questions as possible. So we, as a board, have chosen that when you do have a question, that you can direct it to two candidates. Uh, the candidate, candidates, again, will each have one minute to respond. Questions that are not responded to tonight, as I said, will the answers, the questions will be sent to the candidates and a response emailed. So we will um, start the um, opening statements. We have been asked um, by our media sponsor that when you do answer a question that you do stand, just for the sake of uh, being able to be seen. We will start with the mayoral candidates and um, Fred Morris will be going first. Um, I don't know if that's a good omen or not to go first. Uh, it may be, so we'll see how it goes. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening, and thank you for coming tonight. I am running for mayor of the Township of Centre Wellington, and I want to just say again, thank you for showing the interest in local politics that you're doing here tonight. But first of all, let me tell you a little bit about myself. I'm a 30-year resident of the Township of Centre Wellington and a business owner in downtown Fergus. My family and I proudly call Centre Wellington our home. I'm currently the councillor for Ward 4, and for the past 15 years I've had the privilege of representing the people that live there. In this election, I see four prominent themes that have emerged as I've knocked on doors and I've talked to people. And these are the things I want to talk about in my opening statement tonight. The first is growth. The question I get asked is, are we growing too fast? And can we handle the growth that's coming as quickly as it's coming? So we're going to have to deal with that in the next council because what I see happening is we are growing and we're growing rapidly, but we don't have the things in place to deal properly with that rapid growth. So I think that's going to be job one in the next term of council. The second term, or the second rather issue that I hear at the door is fiscal management. People are not sure that a 4% annual tax increase is sustainable going forward. In the last four years, we've seen almost 16% tax increases and a 30% increase in operational spending. People are not sure that's feasible to keep that kind of increase going. Thirdly is economic development. We are building bedrooms all the time and people are starting to say, hey, we're becoming a bedroom community. We have to start creating jobs here in Center Wellington, but there's a right way and a wrong way to do that and I will do it the right way. And then lastly, it's community engagement. People want to know that their voice can be heard at council. They want to be assured that when they come to speak to their leadership, that their voices will be respected and they will not be regarded as squeaky wheels. I will guarantee that I will not treat anyone like that. So this is my pledge to you this evening. I will do what this community needs. I will be a community mayor, not a corporate mayor. On October 22nd, I ask you to vote for me. Thank you. Thank you, Fred. <laughs> Next is uh, Kelly Linton. Oh, we're starting already. Wow. Uh, firstly, I wanted to thank the Chamber for uh, setting this uh, event up. Um, they're a great partner for us. And thanks, everybody, for coming out. This is a huge crowd, and it's great to see uh, democracy in action. I ran in 2014 because I'm passionate about this town. My family and I love living here. and We've lived here for a long time. I'm also, I'm also passionate about citizen-centered government. Since completing my master's degree in public policy and administration so, so, so many years ago, I spent almost 20 years helping other government organizations across Canada become effective, efficient, and more customer-focused. I have first-hand knowledge of what works and what doesn't work when we're talking about municipal government. And I also know that citizens everywhere including here, have grown tired of politicians and the games they play. Election after election, they play to our fears and tell us what we want to hear. Then they do whatever they want once they get into election. As your mayor, I've tried to do things differently. I've actually done what I promised to do. I've led a council that has established a community-driven roadmap for action and has delivered results. For years, our most daunting challenge has been our deteriorating infrastructure, specifically our crumbling bridges. In the past previous, in the previous two terms of council with Fred as the finance chair, only five bridges were rebuilt in eight years. We were losing this battle. But still our taxes were increasing by an average of 3.4% every year. That changed in 2014. This council, 
Without the support of uh, certain members of council, instituted a, a dedicated 2% capital levy, we are now on track to rebuild 21 bridges in eight years. We had to increase the average annual tax rate by 0.6%, but we are making up for a decade of inaction. If elected, I will continue to focus on rebuilding CW's backbone infrastructure. I'm also passionate about open, honest government. In 2014, I promised to communicate with you. I had 14 interactive town hall sessions, and if elected, I'll continue to communicate with you at every opportunity I can. My track record speaks for itself, and I've demonstrated that I can be trusted. If re-elected, I will continue to work with the new council to get things done for you. Thanks again for coming out tonight, and I look forward to your questions. Thank you, Kelly. Now that we've worked out our technical glitches, both the mayoral candidates had a few extra seconds. Um, we'll move on to uh, ward number one and Don Fisher. Good evening and thank you for attending. My name is Don Fisher. I am seeking re-election as Councillor Ward 1, Centre Wellington Township. Our community is undergoing a profound transformation. Our downtowns are being revitalized by a combination of significant private investment and large-scale public infrastructure projects. Development and redevelopment is occurring throughout the township. Home and business owners are renovating and improving their properties at an unprecedented rate. Council has begun to address our long-standing infrastructure deficit with a clear and adequately funded program of rural bridge replacement and urban road resurfacing. In the midst of this new construction, Council has acted decisively to protect our iconic buildings and precious built heritage and natural heritage through the designation of a number of significant heritage properties and assets. The township is evolving as an organization as well. Council has increased the skills and capability of the administration in the areas of bylaw enforcement, financial analysis, project management, and urban forestry. Most importantly, the organization is striving to become much more open and transparent. We are committed to sharing as much information as possible with residents on traditional and social media platforms. We actively invite public scrutiny of our plans, finances, budgets, and operations. We are always seeking community feedback on everything we do. We are providing significant funding to assist the owners of older buildings in our downtowns in renovating and rehabilitating their properties. This not only increases their visual appeal, but enhances the long-term viability and functionality of our built heritage in these areas. This is a record of real achievement. I am proud of having consistently advocated for and supported these policies and measures. I look forward to discuss the uh, to, to discussing the opportunity. I look forward to it. I look forward to the opportunity of discussing these with you. Thank you. Thank you, Don. Next, we'll have Ian McRae. Hello, my name is Ian McRae. I'm running for Ward One. Thank you, everyone, for coming tonight. It's very much appreciated that you're here. Uh, four key areas that I'm focusing on. Designing Centre Wellington to be a robust, sustainable and resilient community for people of all ages and incomes. This will involve updating our official plan and guidelines to current, to current provincial planning requirements, incorporating new urban design criteria such as active transportation, complete and mixed use development. Promoting greater citizen involvement in the design of our community. Increasing our affordable and rental housing supply for residents working in sectors such as agriculture, construction and tourism. Investing in our downtown cores to ensure their long-term viability as places to live and to work, as well as resolving our parking and traffic challenges. And finally, increasing the diversity of local jobs to buffer downturns in the economy. Secondly, maintaining an affordable tax level. This means improving how we manage projects to avoid costly overruns. Ensuring a balanced approach to growth pays for growth to reduce the taxpayer's cost exposure. Evaluating our use of consultants, determining the expertise and capabilities of staff to do the work instead. Third reason, protecting our water and other natural resources for future generations. This requires ending our complacency about an unlimited water supply. We have reasons to be concerned in Alora, Fergus, and Salem, without the added impact of an international water bottler. Preserving farmland and green spaces as natural regeneration areas for underground water supply and future food supply. Fourth, speeding up replacement of our rural bridges. We need to appreciate the economic burden, inconvenience, and security risk of farmers associated with the number of closed bridges. The northwest corner of Ward 1 has five bridges currently closed 
and rumor of an imminent sixth. We need to work with our farmers rather than a formula to prioritize which bridges to fix first. Thank you, Ian. Thank you. <laughs> Next, representing Ward 2, speaking first will be Kirk McElwain. Thank you for coming out this evening. Am I turned on? Yep, there you go. Thank you for coming out this evening. Thank you to the Chamber for organizing this event, and thank you to the media for making it available to res for residents to be at home. Since moving to Centre Wellington 20 years ago, I've been active in the community as a volunteer in a number of not-for-profit organizations. I now chair Sensation Laura and Monster Month. I'm thinking of adding this event to uh, this election to our Monster Month activities as it could become the scariest, scariest event in October. <laughs> my, my priorities this term, based on resident feedback, include spending, managing growth, and our water. During eight years of the dedicated tax levy, our taxes will rise about 25%. And by dedicating 2% of our tax increase for one item, for all increased to one item, we're not able to address other high priority, priority items in our community. Spending in 2018 has increased over 10%, which includes about $700,000 in consultants. Apparently getting things done means spending money that we can't afford. Our strategic plan says we will ensure that the pace and design of growth remains constant with the, consistent with the objective of retaining Center Wellington's small town feel. Given the planned suburban sprawl, I don't believe we're meeting that objective. Smart growth also includes job creation which has been a back burner issue this term. A consultant has been hired to develop a strategic plan for economic development. I'm hoping the recommendation will be diversification of our investment attraction strategy to address this huge problem. As for water, council must stop using wait for the science. We have science from the 2000 Wellington Groundwater Management Study commissioned by the MLE. We have science provided by Save Our Water that shows the negative impact and two towns of water studies have a planning horizon of 2041. Growth and climate change will both continue beyond 2041. So what exactly are we waiting for? Thank, Thank you, Kirk. You. Next representing Ward 2 is Kim Jefferson. Good evening. I would like sorry. <laughs> Good evening. I would like to thank the Chamber of Commerce for hosting this event and for everybody taking the time out of their evening to come. My name is Kim Jefferson and I am running as a candidate for Ward 2 Councillor. I was raised on a farm just outside of Fergus and I now reside on McNam Street in Alora. I'm a business owner and a landlord since 2001 in downtown Fergus. I currently volunteer as the chair of the Fergus BIA doing event, events and beautification efforts. I'm also the event organizer for Twilight at Templin Gardens, which is the free music event in downtown Fergus. My recent volunteer work has sparked an interest in municipal politics, and I really want to be involved. Getting to know me as a family, we spend a lot of time whitewater paddling and being out in the nature. So I want you to understand that Centre Wellington water supply issues, the health of the Grand River, river conservation, and the environment are important to me. We need to be conscious of the environmental impacts in our policy making, and we need a sustainable water supply. With that being said, I also understand that development and growth is heading our way, and the township is in the process of planning into 2041. With housing development and the provincial density requirements, I know that Centre Wellington needs affordable housing, for our young people starting out, and for our seniors in their retirement years. Our official plan sets out our urban boundary, and the province has a growth management strategy that municipalities need to follow. At Council, I would see how we can work within the provincial framework to maintain our charm and heritage with smart growth and development. I have reached out to active community members and have come to believe that we would also benefit from a youth council. Our, we need to open dialogue and create engagement with our community's youth in a safe place that is inclusive and where they can feel that they matter. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. 
Next, representing County Ward 4, speaking first will be Wayne Baker. Good evening. I would initially like to thank the uh, Center Wellington Chamber of Commerce. Being past president of the Arthur and District Chamber of Commerce, I know the work that's uh, involved in putting an event such as, such as this together. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, members of the press, fellow candidates. My name is Wayne Baker, and with your permission, I'd like to be your counselor for Ward 4 Wellington County. My wife Marilyn and I relocated to a rural property just outside Arthur in December 2005. The house was run down, the winter was particularly cold, and the marriage was tested, <laughs> especially when the weather was bad. Marilyn experienced her first snow day that winter. Suffice to say, we survived. She's a city girl that come kicking and screaming to the country, and now she won't leave. I scratch started the business I currently operate. As mentioned, Earlier, I'm past president of the Arthur District Chamber of Commerce, and I'm actively involved in the Arthur community, which includes volunteering for the lo local youth drop-in, the Arthur Door. Why do I want to be your counselor for Ward 4? That's a tough question to answer in just two minutes. How about I give you a sense, a brief sense of the kind of thinking I will bring to council? If you like what you hear, you can show your support by casting your ballot in my favor. Um, if elected to council, my attitude will be focused towards what will make the lives of the residents of Wellington County, County better. And by doing so with an eye to tax efficiency, infrastructure capacity, and a needs-based approach to spending our tax dollars, not a wants-based approach. I thank you for the opportunity to, uh, to address you this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Wayne. Next to speak is Alan Hans. Thank you everyone for attending tonight's debate. I was born and raised in Fergus with the leave to study political science and economics at the University of Toronto. I now work at the Ecclestone Financial Group in Fergus and have the pleasure of raising two wonderful daughters here, Emma five and Grace eight, with my wife Carrie who teaches at Alma Public School. I have a deep respect for what this community has given me growing up and my family now, and I've done the best I can to give back over the years. I've assisted with Habitat for Humanity in building three area homes, as well as salvaging items from the old Fergus Motel, some of you may remember, for sale at the ReStore. I've donated blood, I've coached a baseball team, I'm chair of Melville United Church Council as well, where we're working on revitalizing a downtown Fergus landmark. And I'm running for council today because I want to create the kind of healthy, vibrant communities where our children can thrive and see in the future a place where they can stay and raise a family of their own. Should I earn your vote in this election, I'd also like to help make the county a more visible presence in your daily life. You're probably aware of the township's town hall sessions held quarterly. I'd love to have the county participate in their own version where the decision makers, councillors, and staff can explain the rationale behind the decisions that affect you, and you in turn have a turn to share with those same decision makers how that impacts you on a daily basis. It's part of being transparent and accountable, and it's about time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alan. Next to speak will be Penny Rankin. seconds <laughs> no <laughs> we'll, we'll restart the when you start start speaking <laughs> go ahead Penny hello hello my name is Penny Rankin I'm a candidate for County Councillor in Ward 4 I live, work, and play in Wellington County. My husband and I have been sheep farmers and worked off the farm. I was the Freedom of Information Quarter Coordinator for a Municipal Police Service for 22 years. I'm a member of the Cultural Roundtable. The committee pr promotes a diversified culture, providing interest for current residents while drawing in new people. This in turn will also encourage new businesses and increase econo economic growth. I am the president of the auxiliary to Louise Marshall Hospital, 
We support the hospital with fundraising for equipment so that the best possible medical care is available. I'm a leader of Vacation Bible School. As well, I'm still a member of Girl Guides of Canada. I have been a leader for Brownies, Guides, and Pathfinders. That is why I'm very concerned with having the homeless teens and adults in County Wellington and those struggling with mental illness. If elected, I would like to work on committees with experienced personnel to find solutions to help those individuals. Past history is not only interesting, but it's important to preserve our heritage for future generations. I belong to both the Mount Forest Museum and Archives and the Arthur Historical Society. I also belong to the committee which is restoring the Lyons Blacksmith Shop in Kenilworth. It is very unique to Wellington County. When restored, it will both educate and interest adults and children and show a way of life that was and should not be forgotten. I'm also concerned with the seniors who are struggling to make ends meet and who need affordable housing and support. Some people have disability issues and require special services. By working with different organizations in Centre and Wellington North, we must assure that all residents are provided with the necessities of life. And these are some of the issues that I'm working on. Thank you. Thank you, Penny. Next to speak is Jake Bowman. Good evening. Thank you very much, the Chamber of Commerce, for hosting this. My name is Jake Bowman, and I'm a candidate for Wellington County Board 4. As a lifelong resident of Wellington County, my wife Anita and I have owned and operated a dairy and cash crop farm for the last 35 years in the Fergus area. I'm actively involved in local church, school, and business committees, having recently completed a number of terms on our county dairy farmers committee. I am committed to fiscal responsibility and sound planning. I am committed to being a good steward of our many resources so that there is sufficient also for the future generations. Whether it be land, water, or air, we must be active in providing for a sustainable future. Wellington County has a dynamic, growing population with a rich history which we must build on for a strong future. Growth in our various communities should be encouraged so that we can continue to provide the various services that we have become used to. From our earliest settlers of this area to the present, many people groups have come to call this area home. They have made this area into a rich heritage. I'm thankful for the opportunities we have to live and grow in this country, in a county. My desire is to, to uh, beyond County Council to encourage growth and to encourage a uh, community. So if you, I, I ask for your support. Thank you. Thank you, Jake. <laughs> Last to speak in County Ward 4 is Ross Chalk. Hello, my name is Ross Chalk and I am running for Wellington County. Ross, speak right into the mic, please. Hello, my name is Ross Jock, and I am running for the Wellington County Ward 4 Councillor position. I put my name forward because I believe that I have the experience and skill required to make a difference. Voters are losing faith, Voters are losing faith in their elected representatives. Property taxes increase every year. Politicians have increased their own salaries. The system needs to be reviewed to eliminate inefficiencies that will lead to cost savings. Let me put my skills and experience to work for you. I am the president of Ross Chalk Accounting Services Limited, a successful accounting business in Wellington North. I was a counselor in Arthur Township from 1994 to 1998, pre-amalgamation. I was a counselor in Wellington North from 2003 till 2010. I have been a finance committee chairman, a member of the recreation committee, board of works committee, Building and Property Committee, Economic Development Committee, Fire Committee. I have completed the Municipal Accounting and Finance Program required of treasurers. I will use the skills and knowledge that I have acquired to be a team player on Wellington County Council. My priorities include fiscal responsibility, openness in government, infrastructure renewal, natural resources stewardship, 
the county should be run like a business. With my accounting background and business experience, I can be a critical part of the budgeting process and financial review as the county moves forward. I will always be available if you have a concern or would like to speak to me about any issue. For business sense, for common sense, for experience, vote Ross Chalk. Thank you. Thank you, Ross. Next to speak, we uh, will go in order for County Ward 5. And um, Mary is not sitting at the front, um, we, and not that we want, we're minimizing what she has to say or her voice in any way, but as she's acclaimed, and there's so many people that are at the table, we made a choice that she would have an opening statement so that everybody remembers who she is, and uh, you can uh, hear her platform, and, um, but then would not take, partake in the question period. Well, hello everyone. I am the counselor for the Ward 5, and I know that that sounds kind of odd because county wards are a little bit different than township wards, so I'm gonna give you a visual. So if you were to get in your car from this legion and go all the way to the very edge of Wellington County, that means the Waterloo border, so past the Graceway, and then across and up to what would be known as um, Alma and come back and go all the way over to Jones Baseline, which in the town of Fergus is actually Gartshore, Scotland. And anything on the north side of the river inside that boundary is Ward 5. So why did I want to run for this position? Well, I've been active in this community very long with regards to the BIA, hospital fundraising, festivals, my church, and just downright getting busy with the community. I've been blessed to spend seven and a half years as a local town councillor, and when it came as an opportunity to move to county council, I stepped forward. I'm quite excited because I believe I bring a woman's perspective. Maybe that sounds a little gender specific, but I might as well go there. I represent 50% of the population. We need to be heard at County Council. We need to be listening for how it is affecting our seniors in this community, both male and female, when they can't find a home to live here. I currently sit on the Social Services Committee and the information, which is libraries, the heritage, which is the museum, and on the seniors, which is Wellington County long-term care. We're working on a plan to build a continuum of care, an exciting opportunity for this county where you could move in on your own, own your own place, and then move throughout that area and down and into long-term care at the end. Thanks, Senator Wellington, for the, being this host tonight. I'm a proud member of over 20 years in business, and thank you so much for what you do. I guess when you give her the mic, you can't cut her off. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Next, we will move to County Ward 6. Um, speaking first will be Sean Waters. Hi, my name is uh, Sean Waters. Um, I'm, uh, I'm actually asking for your, your support again. I've been at this uh, for a long time. Uh, if you don't know me, uh, I was on the very last Alora Council, uh, prayed amalgamation, that was back in 1997. And I was uh, part of the uh, amalgamation team, so uh, we went in and sort of reshaped the, basically the county. Um, served the last uh, eight years uh, on uh, county council, and you know, those are sort of my political things, but I do much more. I, I'm a, a very involved in the community. Um, I do things like uh, River Fest Laura. Uh, I'm one of, the, one of the members of that and, and directors of River Fest Laura, and we've grown that little that little project from about 500 people, and this past August we had 16,000 people in the park. And, and what it really speaks to is about community. And, and that's really who I am. I'm a community-minded guy. I, uh, I, if you ask me, come to my house and say, hey, Sean, I need help on this, I'll be there. My, my political history allows me the understanding of continuity, understands how to grow a community. And we're going through some really tremendous pressures here on growth. And we're going to really need to uh, deal with those things. And you need people like myself who understand the history and what it takes to do uh, the right thing. 
So I, like everybody else, I'm concerned about it. We came, moved to this community a long time ago. We've seen a lot of changes, but we need to have the support of you people to help make this community a, a great community. Uh, and I'm all, all, also open to you know people coming to uh, to talking to me about what's going on. And, and someone had mentioned uh, the county's not a well-run machine. It is far from that. It is a great machine, but it, it needs your input. So I'm hoping that uh, you support me, and we're looking forward to talking to you a little bit later. Thanks. Thank you, Sean. Next, next to speak in County Ward 6 is Diane Ballantyne. Good evening. I'd like to acknowledge the Six Nations of the Grand River on whose ancestral and treaty lands that we play, work, and live. Thank you for joining us this evening for the Chamber for hosting. My name is Diane Ballantyne, and I'm running for County Council Ward 6 because I think Senator Wellington deserves an effective advocate. 57% of every tax dollar that we pay to our township is transferred to the county. 57% is a great deal of money, and I think that that warrants far better value. As the largest township, Center Wellington is left holding the bag for enormous amounts of infrastructure. The county takes in five times the amount of revenue, but only has two times the amount of infrastructure to maintain. In addition, we lack sufficient childcare spaces and an affordable housing plan. Insiders at the county use the term the Wellington standard, which means expensive. Take the almost $6 million New Hillsburg Library, and let me be perfectly clear, I have nothing against libraries. I'm a teacher, I love libraries, and I fully understand the important role that they play in our communities. What I am against is overspending just because you can. And in the county, they can because they have over $200 million sitting in reserves. The county is an institution, and institutions protect themselves. And as a result, we need leadership at the county level to go beyond business as usual. We need to better represent the ratepayer and be a voice for our changing community's needs. Someone who's not afraid to ask courageous questions and take action. I've been taking action for decades around injustice in this community. And to me, this imbalance between the county and Center Wellington is a different yet equally important kind of injustice. We deserve a stronger voice, more of the county's tax pie, and a counselor who do, will do the research and advocate effectively. On October 22nd, I ask you to vote for Diane Ballantyne, new leadership for our changing community. Miigwech, thank you. Thank you. First to speak for English Public School Board will be Jesse Wooten. I guess I'll be up here now. <laughs> so I am Jesse Wooden. I am uh, putting my hat in the ring for the Upper Grand District School Board Public School Trustee. And just want to give you a little bit of background about myself and my motivations for doing this. I know the trustee position sometimes gets overlooked on the ballot. Traditionally, some people don't even vote because they don't think that the position affects them. I think that is a mistake. And I think you really need to put some thought into who you're voting for for this position. I am a tech person. I work in the tech industry at a successful startup in Kitchener-Waterloo. Um, and that's the perspective that I want to bring to the school board. I think that the future of the job market is really evolving. I see it every day as I interview people for new positions. The complexities of the different um, new positions. I am interviewing for a position right now that no one else has really ever done. And these types of skills and tools are something that we really need to make sure to arm our students with as we move forward. The school board is a board of directors and we need to have differing opinions and differing points of view on that. And I really firmly believe that the STEM, science, technology, engineering, mathematics are extremely important as we move forward in a balanced approach. Um, the arts, music, history, those are all extremely important things as well, and I don't want to get into a position of overcorrecting when one thing is lacking in order to then leave something else lacking. It really is a balanced approach that we need to take, and this is the perspective that I'm 
bring to the table. I realize that some of you have the question cards and I am not there on the RSVP. I do hope that maybe I will get some questions tonight, but if not, please feel free. Send me an email anytime. You can get my information at my website, voteinform.info, where I also have some information about all the other candidates here, as I believe that an informed vote and in the whole democratic process in the entire election is extremely important. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jesse. Well, I may be last, but I'm okay with that. <laughs> Thank you to all of you people who showed up. You are the reason Senator Wellington is as awesome as it is. I'm really glad to be running again for this role of trustee that I have so cherished the role for the last four years, representing you, representing your children, and representing your, your families at every go. You know, success is paramount. Your children are number one to me. That's where my story ends. I'm gonna go on to tell you a little bit about what I plan to do and continue to do, but the number one thing for me is your children and their success. During uh, my last election, I challenged Center Wellington to become green. Every single school in Center Wellington's Upper Grand District School Board is now eco-certified, and we are the very first board in all of the province to do so, uh, very first public board. So we're doing some amazing things, and I've been a big part of that. Uh, special education, huge to me. I'm very proud to be the representative on our spec ed team. Uh, I go and I speak, I ask the hard questions. I do that when it comes to fiscal responsibility. By the way, our budget is upwards of 350 to 400 million dollars. We represent, my job is to represent the entire county and I do it with great pride. We have a fiscally balanced budget. We are completely ready to play. We have addressed issues and will continue to address issues that include everything from sex ed to uh, to uh, French immersion. And on that note, I am your voice for French immersion. Parce que je parle français, j'oublie ça. Je n'ai pas d'utiliser ça. Je parle français et je parle pour vous et pour tes familles, uh, pour tes familles en Centre Wellington. I'm not even looking at this anymore because I'm just wrapping myself up with passion. I am your Senator Wellington Public School Board Trustee, and I'm asking for your vote so I can continue to do so with the passion that I've proven thus far. Thank you. Thank you, Barb. I do realize that we're quite tight for space, but I would ask the people that are sort of in the doorway maybe to come in and walk over to the far side of the room if you want, just so that people can come in and, and hear what everybody has to say. So we're going to start with the questions. Again, um, it'll be a one minute time frame for people to respond. Our first question is to the mayoral candidates. And I will start with uh, Fred responding first and then Kelly. And the question is, how do you see the role of the Center Wellington Chamber of Commerce in your business community? Well, I think, that, I think that's a fairly easy question. Certainly, the chamber is a very uh, key player in economic development. And, uh, and business uh, expansion in, in Center Wellington. So uh, their programs are designed to promote business and uh, I would work closely with the chamber uh, to facilitate the growth of businesses. I think we've got some excellent businesses here and we need to play to our strengths. Our strengths are the new hospital, the health sciences. Uh, we need to look at those and I think the chamber would be eager to bring in businesses in that uh, field. Also, I think we have a great agribusiness uh, in Center Wellington. And again, I think the farming community would love to be included in the work of the chamber. So I think uh, there's lots to do, there's lots that could be done, and I would look forward to having the chamber as a valuable, valuable partner. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's a good question. The Chamber is our primary uh, business partner when it comes to anything related to economic development. So um, w regardless of what the, what the area is, whether it's agri-food, whether it's tourism, whether it's downtown uh, work, we really have to partner with the Chamber in, in everything that we do. Um, I imagine that they're going to play a really huge role when we're developing our economic development strategy in the next few months. Um, recognizing that uh, everybody, everything is a moving target, we have to make sure that the chamber is playing the role it needs to play, and it needs to play a big role. Um, we have all, all, all kinds of opportunities as we move forward. Um, jobs and investment are coming uh, to this uh, town, and the chamber needs to be a big part of that. So I'm always interested to talk to the chamber. I know they do great events like this, um, the mayor's breakfast, and a lot of different things. We got to make sure that we're partnering with the chamber and everything, and everything that we do going forward, for sure. Thank you.
The second question is also directed to the mayoral candidates, and I'll have Kelly speak first. Uh, there have been comments that business is booming in Center Wellington. In fact, over the past four years, very few new jobs were created in our community relative to the growth rate of jobs in Ontario. Your economic development plan seems to include making promotional videos, reducing development fees for new business, and transferring this cost to existing taxpayers, and possibly investing a lot of new taxpayer money to service employment land with no prospective investors in sight. These initi initiatives are very costly for existing taxpayers. Can you explain your cost-benefit analysis for this type of economic development? Uh, are you serious? I got a minute for that? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, I think, you know, we have to look at what's happening in Center Wellington right now. Um, we have a $200 million, $150 million project going on downtown Laura. 200 new jobs. Um, that's huge. Um, we have no land left because it's all been gobbled up by new businesses and we have to get in the business of buying, servicing and selling land because when people, when different businesses come, they're not going to choose Center Wellington unless we have land, shovel ready land for them to uh, go after. So the thought that things aren't happening in Center Wellington, I don't even know what to do with that because all you have to do is look around, especially our downtowns. There's not one empty storefront in, in both of our downtowns. Um, uh, business is booming in Center Wellington. Um, you know, we, we reduced the uh, upfront development charges, uh, we slashed them, we improved the process, and we're doing everything that we can to make sure that we're bringing jobs and investment uh, to Center Wines. And things take time, but we're definitely on the right track, and all you have to do is look around and you'll see that. Thank you. I think the, the essence of that question is basically, uh, going forward and looking back on the past, yes, we have a, a $200 million project here in Alora, but really that started way back in 2010 and it's been slowly progressing to this uh, date uh, and to this time that we're in currently. So I, I don't really think we can take a whole lot of credit for what happened there. It was on its way long before this term of council and even before uh, the previous term of council. But going forward, I think there's some things that we need to do to develop uh, economic, uh, economically here in Centre Wellington. I think just buying land and, and servicing it and saying, okay, they will come, but who will come? I don't know the answer to that. I think we've got to identify our needs, first of all. What businesses do we want here? And then secondly, we've got to define our competitive strengths. And then thirdly, we need to proactively and aggressively go out, knock on doors, invite businesses to bring their business to Centre Wellington. That's the way to create jobs. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is also um, allocated to the mayoral candidates, and I'll have Fred answer first. And it's titled Growing the Right Way. Um, I note that there's been continued work on a number of plans and initiate, initiated several more. The list includes plans for managing growth, water, transportation, fire, emergency services, urban design standards, urban forestry. Over the past two years alone, uh, there has been paid over a million dollars to consultants to work on these plans. None has been approved by council or included in our official plan where it could have legal impact. In the meantime, you keep approving new subdivisions. Is this the idea of growing the right way in Centre Wellington? Well, the short answer to that, folks, is no, it's not. Because I draw a difference between what is a consultant's plan and what is an action plan. We have paid over a million dollars, almost two million dollars in this term of council to consultant reports. All of which within themselves call for millions and millions of dollars worth of expenses to implement those suggestions. So I think we've got lots of consultant plans that are gathering dust. We have half of these plans yet to be approved so they, they can't be enforced, they can't work out uh, the details of, of, our, uh, of our growth. And so I think we gotta get some action plans. We gotta get something on paper that says, this is what we're going to do it, and make things happen here in Center Wellington. Not just keep collecting consultant plans and creating work for out of town consultants. Just watching the timer here. Got seven, six, five. You good? Okay. I just want to coordinate things. Um, one of the things that was really important in this term of council is we make up for last terms of council when it, when it comes to planning and doing long-term, long-range planning. 
Um, so we're developing a long range uh, water master plan. We're developing a transportation master plan. We developed a new, our first ever for, uh, public forestry ma uh, plan, um, parks and rec master plan. These things are really important because they provide our, our action items for the, for the next term of council. And without this, we're, taking, we're making knee-jerk decisions. So it's really, really important that we have a well-managed plan for growth. All that fits under our growth management strategy, which establishes um, areas in Centre Wellington where we need to grow. Uh, making sure that we retain our small town feel takes work and it takes planning. Uh, next term of council, um, we've caught up with the planning. Next term of council is about action. It's about getting things done. It's about implementing the things that we said we are, were important to us and that you said in the strategic plan and the community consultation that we did during that process were important to you. So there'll be, there'll be lots of action coming based on the recommendations that came out of those plans. Thank you, Kelly. <laughs> Question number four. Four is directed to Ward 1, um, Councillor Ian McRae, and Ward 2, Councillor Kim Jefferson. So if you are elected to council, what would you recommend to council to be to solve the parking in downtown Alora? And if Ian could answer first. Okay, um, I thought about this, and what I think we need to look at is the, the amount of time that people are parked on the main street. So looking at, say, for example, a three-hour time limit which gives um, sufficient time to go to the restaurants, to go to the pubs, to also wander through shops and have a look and even have time to purchase, as well as having some places for more like 30-minute parking for people to rush into the coffee shops and be able to pick up things or for people to go to the jewelry stores and get things. Um, also to look at um, how we redesign the parking slot. So instead of parallel parking, we may want to look at things like angled parking, like what the people are showing us behind the old Dolby house where we have parallel parking, but people are choosing to go angle. So I think we've got to engage people, engage the merchants to help us sort it out. I don't think we need consultants. We also need to look at putting in parking garages. We had an opportunity up beside the LCBO to put in a small two-story parking garage. There should be another one down behind the L &M Plaza, behind the L &M Plaza, because this is where we need to keep the vitality of the downtown core is having parking. Thank you. Kim? Well, this is a bit of a coincidence. We were discussing parking at the uh, community dinner that we were participating in the other night. So we're both kind of of the same mind where we need to investigate angled parking and that we can look into parking structures and where something like that would be able to be put into Allure. Um, I had also thought that there's different parking apps that are available for our phones and our smartphones so that the municipality operates it and you do have to charge for parking with that, um, but you can also renew your parking that you have on the street through your phone while you're sitting and having dinner and extend your time and do your payments, and that goes back to the municipality, which might be something that we could do to afford the parking structures. Um, but yes, in downtown Fergus and downtown Alora, <coughs> the parking is a huge issue with our BIA and our businesses, and I'm supportive of any information and working with any groups that had any wonderful ideas that we could maybe implement. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is to the mayoral candidates, and I'll have Kelly answer first. The kitty car stone structure that was originally to be integrated into the Pearl Conception, as is referenced in an article in the Wellington Advertiser, uh, the was reported as saying the intent to retain the flavor of the existing site's heritage through the use of stonework and heritage style design. The building known as the Kitty Carp Factory would be blended into the new condominium development. The Walser buildings would be redeveloped into commercial spaces. Now Pearl's uh, latest site plan for the south side of the Grand shows the Kitty Carp Factory ruins are removed. Why has the Township of Centre Wellington planning staff, Heritage Centre Wellington, Mayor and Council, what have they done? Apparently nothing to designate and preserve the Kitty Car Ruins. Do you intend to sit passively by while one of Allura's best known landmarks is demolished? Um, Heritage is, is a very important to me, and I know our uh, Centre Wellington Heritage groups works very closely with Pearl um, and the Allura Mill in every step of the way. Uh, it wasn't my understanding that the kitty car uh, ruins were ever going to stay. Um, 
I think that uh, you, we have an amazing uh, opportunity um, to redevelop the south side of the river, um, re reclaiming um, that, that part of the river where we're building, they're, they're going to be building a, a walkway all the way along it. Um, it's, it's, we're cleaning up a brownfield site. Um, this is an exciting, exciting project for Lawrence, exciting project for Center Wellington. And at the end of the day, um, we're going to make sure that we, uh, we do whatever we can to ensure that th that's designed in the right way um, and, and retaining the heritage features that we need to retain and giving the developer uh, the leeway to, uh, to do what they need to do and do what they do best. So uh, I'm excited about everything uh, that that project is going to bring to Center Wellington. I think when it comes to heritage and the loss of the kitty car factory and, and other heritage properties over the last uh, term of council is symptomatic of what really our problem is. And the problem is, is we have a grossly out of date heritage policy. It was passed in 2005, it's not been updated since. In fact, at council meetings I've asked the question repeatedly, what, uh, when is it going to be updated? Should we look at it, looking at this policy again and taking into account the new realities of our community? And I just keep getting stalled answers again and again and again. I think what's happened is a shame. I think our heritage properties is what makes us a special small town, and I will do everything I can to protect it. The next, the next question is actually um, allocated to all council and mayors, but we are going to only ask the two members from County Ward 6, which are Sean and Diane, and I'll ask Sean to answer first. Will you vote to allow or disallow the establishment and operation of stores that sell cannabis for recreational use in Centre Wellington? Well, uh, it's not legal yet, so uh, we're going to wait, obviously, to hear what happens uh, out of Ottawa, and then obviously when that comes, we'll, we'll deal with it. Uh, it you know, um, uh, it, it's an interesting one. Uh, my, my wife had cancer uh, to, not only once but twice, and uh, she had medicinal uh, cannabis, and it made her feel good and be able to get through that. So everyone has their reasons for these types of things, and then obviously when um, when uh, the thing comes to uh, a point that we're involved, in that, then I'll deal with it. But I know that I've seen the benefits of it, so uh, it's something, and I think I, I could probably look around this room and, and people have tried it themselves, but you know, it's not something uh, we should be dismissive of. So as a high school teacher for the last 23 years, I'm well aware of the impacts of cannabis on the youth population, and I definitely think that there needs to be extremely tight regulations to make sure that we're protecting young people from accessing it, although we all know that they can access it right now if they want to. Um, I think that it is, uh, my preference would have been to have it uh, distributed through the LCBO, but that doesn't appear to be what the case is going to be. I still would, if it's going to be in private um, dispensaries, that we should, I would like it to also be in the LCBO as uh, a competitive market so that people could have different shopping experiences. Uh, I agree that it is useful for medicinal purposes as well as recreational purposes. It's going to be legal. And yes, I would support it coming into Center Wellington. Thank you. To the mayoral candidates, and we'll have Fred start. Would you support a reduction in development charges for industrial and commercial property so that we can create the jobs we need? I think there's a better way. I uh, did some research and I found that the town of Milton, for example, does not, uh, does not cut and reduce the development charges. What they do is they amortize them, because I know the problem that businesses have. They can't finance development charges through the bank. So that's why they request repeatedly to us, can you do something to help us with our DC charges? I'm willing to help businesses with their DC charges. I'm willing to give our treasurer the power to amortize up to 10, excuse me, up to 10 years for DC charges to be paid. So treat it like a mortgage, but pay it because the township shouldn't be giving favoritism because if we don't get it from businesses, we have to get it from the residents. And that's what's happening. And I'm against that.
Hi, um, one of the things that we heard um, in 2014 from our business community that development charges in Centre Wellington were too high, and it was uh, putting a negative. It was, it was negative for uh, businesses who wanted to expand and businesses who wanted to relocate in Centre Wellington. So what we've done already, we've uh, developed, we've reduced upfront development charges from seven dollars and sixteen uh, cents a square foot to two dollars and fifty-four cents a square foot. And we're seeing a huge uptake on that. We're seeing uh, we're seeing businesses come to Centre Wellington and expand in Centre Wellington um, because of that. Um, so that is something that that has been identified as a barrier to business, and I'd like to see that sort of program continue. Obviously, you don't want to have residents paying uh, to subsidize business, but if we're serious about not becoming a bedroom community, we have to be aggressive when it comes to development charges and reducing the barriers to entry and the barriers to expansion here in Centre Wellington. Because if we don't. Uh, businesses are going to be going, going to Guelph, going to be coming to KW, going to be going up north, um, and we have to have our fair share. We need to do whatever we can to increase jobs and investment here in Centre Wellington. Thank you, Kelly. <laughs> Next question is also uh, to the mayoral candidates. Kelly, I'll have you answer first. Being a mayor requires making decisions on topics that are not foreseen. The McDonald funds and the water issue are two examples. To help understand how a mayor might respond to certain issues, I'd like to know what informs you. Can you share with us an author, documentary, podcast, or anything that helps you educate on making a strong, healthy community? Oh boy. Um, <laughs> I wasn't ready for that question. Um, I, I, I do um, re read a lot and I do get inspiration from a, a bunch of different things and one of the ones that comes to mind right off the top is the, the five dysfunctions of a team. Um, and one of the things that I think is really critical when you're making difficult decisions and things that come out of left field is you, you work well as a team and you make sure that uh, you're setting your priorities right, um, you're being clear um, with what you want to do. Um, you make sure that you engage people, um, and that's one of the things that we've really ramped up, widespread engagement. I mean, we have to go out to the majority of people and ask what they want to do with the money that they pay to the Township of Center Wellington. So any, anything that, um, so that's, that's one of the um, pieces of literature that I, that I, folk, that I like, um, but at the end of the day, you really have to um, figure out what is the in the best interest of this community, and you have to ask the people. That's the number one thing that you have to do. I, I do read. <laughs> I read a lot. In fact, I read about three books at a time. I put it down and pick up another one. I start that one. I get so far, I put it down and pick up another one. Then I kind of rotate around through the three of them until I get it finished. So I do read. But... Uh, I think what basically I've gained through the seminars I've gone to, the conferences I've gone to, the books I've read, the leadership books that I've read and so on, it comes down to how you help your community succeed to one word, and that is respect. Everyone needs to respect the other. We need to respect business, business needs to respect us. Council needs to respect its citizens, and citizens need to respect council. So if you can get respect actively working in your community and the only way to do that is to build a bridge of trust then you will have a good healthy community the next the next question is directed to uh, members of ward 2 kirk McElwain and kim jefferson why must we vote via internet this is unsecure. I will not vote because of this. What changes are you hoping to make? And I'll have Kirk answer first. Um, we went through a lot of discussion at council on the voting method this time. Uh, we did a mail-in uh, vote the last time around, and it ended up with we needed to give a three-week turnaround, so people voted three weeks before any candidates even got around to see them at the front door, and uh, so the councillors didn't really like this approach very much because it just gave us too, too short a time to knock on doors and visit people. Um, going back to the paper ballot, it requires travel. The one thing about the online ballot is that uh, you can vote from anywhere, so even if you're on vacation, you can still vote at the same time as everyone else. And my background is IT. I believe that the internet is pretty secure, so that's up to the individual personally, so that's 
uh, the way I feel about it. Okay, I'm not currently on council, so I'm not privy to the decision for why this decision was made. Um, I believe it was in part that we were going to be going paperless, which is a big benefit with our environment. Um, and we also had a little seminar a couple weeks ago with the company that is taking care of the voting. And they were talking about their servers and how they have secure servers and they have backup servers. And if there's anything with a power outage, it's all taken care of. And that they have a couple different locations for the backup servers of their actual servers. Um, so I'm feeling that it's pretty secure. Um, and what was the other part? <laughs> what changes are you hoping to make? Um, I don't know. I would like people to feel more confident in their decisions by the municipality for this way that we're doing things with the moving forward in technology. Um, if you're not feeling at home that you want to do it on your own internet server, we do have different places that you can go and vote and the township staff is going to be there to assist. And thank you. Thank you, Kim. Next question is um, to the mayoral candidates. We'll have Fred answer first. Where does agriculture fit into your economic development priorities for the municipality? It's quite simply, it's, it's a huge player. It has to be because it's a large part of our community is in agriculture. So to me, it is one of our, again, of our strengths as a community that we have this feature. We, we have this sector operating within our, our boundaries. And, and uh, I think we need to form better partners with our ag, ag society and our ag uh, community and our farming community. And I think that they, they can help us uh, do some of the things, even in our infrastructure, that need doing. And I was in Bellwood in the spring. I, I spoke to someone from the farming community, our community there, and they said, why doesn't the township engage the farmers in asking which bridge to build first? Because he said, you've built some great bridges out here, but the Queen Mary is a very important bridge to us. Why aren't you building that one? He said, it's not going to be done until 2024. That's the kind of engagement we need with people in this community. So we do things when they need it done the right way. So um, this, the agricultural sector is huge for Central Wellington. It's something that sets us apart when you're looking at 408 square kilometers of land and the majority of that is rural, you know it's really, really important. Um, one of the things that we, we recognize in the Economic Development Task Force and we actually built a working group on it is the making sure that we're doing everything we can in the agri-food sector. We have a huge opportunity economically to partner with the University of Guelph and to partner with farmers and to partner with our restaurants and the food areas. And I know the county is, is getting into that, but there's, we're just kind of scratching the surface of, of the economic development potential um, with, the agri with our agricultural partners, and we have to really push that forward uh, in the next term of council. Um, it's one of our strategic advantages. It's something that sets us apart from other municipalities, and we gotta make sure that we're leveraging that. Again, to the mayoral candidates, starting with Kelly. I'm concerned with the increase in talk of sewage disposal and water. Is there going to be a reworking or refurbishing of the sewage pumping station on Water Street? Because it was obvious from the stench this evening last that it's not working. From what I hear, it is supposed to be state of the art, but if it's not working now, what will happen in, with the increase in flow from new development mandated by the provincial government? I think every once in a while, um, it's okay to say, I don't know. And this is one question that I really don't know about. This is the first I've heard about this. Um, but obviously, we uh, have a great staff at the township, and we have experts in all the different areas from source protection to water to sewage. Um, and this is something um, that if I had them at my disposal, I would say, can you relook into that? Because if there's an issue for residents, there's an issue for all of us. So um, I, this is the first I've heard of it, um, so I'm not going to make anything up. Well, I won't make anything up, but I've heard of it. <laughs> uh, I talked to people about this, and they, they have expressed their uh, displeasure, especially those that live in that area and have to deal with that uh, that smell on a regular basis. And I do know that we have sort of uh, a mechanism in place with our uh, wastewater treatment plants that 
to spray into the air when the stench is a, a bit excessive. But perhaps it's not enough, and maybe that's what we have to do in the next term of council, is deal with our public works, ask our public works department, is there any better technology out there that can solve this problem, or at least help it along a little further. But uh, it is a problem in certain areas of the town. In Fergus, it happens at the wastewater treatment plant there from time to time, and so it does happen in Malora as well. But it's not an easy fix, and it's not an easy solution, but we maybe have to talk about it in the next term. Thank you. I don't know, in my, in my world, in agriculture, when you smell stuff like that, it's the, it's the smell of money, so. <laughs> Uh, the next question again is for the mayoral candidates, and uh, I guess we will have where we were with uh, Fred first. Given that the Badley Bridge meets all of the Ontario Heritage Act criteria for designation and has been identified as a landmark in an identified significant cultural heritage in the most recent heritage plan from February 2018, how can the county and the township planning administration staff and heritage advisory committees provide in good faith advice to upper tier and lower tier councils which support or recommend the de demolition of an, ex of an identified significant built heritage resource while knowing the demolition is not consistent with the statutory requirement that such heritage resources shall be conserved and that demolition does not conform to either the upper tier municipality official plan or the lower tier municipal official plan. Th this is where governments get stuck in a rut sometimes. They, they get in their idea that they got to do things always the same way. And I, I, I appreciate this question because it does speak to, to, again, to the heritage of Center Wellington, the heritage built heritage facilities of Center Wellington. But we first talked to the county about this when they planned to do the Badley Bridge. And we said, it would be nice if you kept it looking very similar to the way it was. No, no, we don't do it that way anymore. We build the Texas-style bridge similar to the one that's over in uh, Fergus on, on Tower Street. But we said, well, can you at least do some features? And so they, they did some features, but they said, but well, you have to pay for those extra features. But this is where, again, folks, we need to come together as governments. The municipality and the county should sit down and talk about the things that are valuable to the community. And if the community says that bridge is a valuable heritage asset, then we need to work out a solution that respects that. And that's what I think I would do. I think um, that's a, I actually agree with uh, part of what Councilor Moore said. Um, it's really important to talk to citizens. Um, at the end of the day, what we have to really do is, is what's the price going to be? Um, they don't build steel bridges like, the, like that anymore, and we have to look, what is it worth to the taxpayers of Centre Wellington and the taxpayer of the county because it's a county project um, with top-ups potentially from Centre Wellington. We have to look at what's it, what's it worth to the citizens of Centre Wellington. Is it worth paying this much extra to rebuild this bridge in the likeness that it is right now? Um, everything costs. There's nothing free. Um, we'd love to retain our heritage everywhere everywhere that we can in Centre Wellington, but everything costs money, and who's paying it? The taxpayer is paying for it. So we have to ask the taxpayer, and we have to do a cost-benefit analysis on every bridge that we do, and how much can we afford? It would be nice to rebuild bolstering bridges when we can, but uh, if the cost is prohibitive and it's going to be borne by taxpayers, it makes sense that we ask the taxpayer about that. So that is something that we're going to have to look at and invite input from the, ta from the taxpayer and then take it from there. Thank you. Uh, this question is directed to Don Fisher and Kirk McElwain. Will there soon be public transportation between Fergus and Alora? Don, if you could answer that first. Uh, the short answer is I have no idea. Uh, the longer answer is it would be a good thing to do, but people need to be reminded of the fact that there was kind of a service previously and it did not work out too well. Uh, what happens typically with public transit is you, you need a certain critical mass of people along the planned routes in order to make it viable. So there has to be enough people who will ride it and use it and pay for it in order to make the service viable. That kind of ties into the new developments that are taking place in between Ferguson and Laura, which will fill those gaps. 
And I would anticipate at some point in the future, when those develop developments come online and people are living there and the roads become a little more crowded, there will be an opportunity for public transit to actually work because there will be enough people, there will be enough traffic, there will be enough inconvenience that would make it worthwhile. How long that takes to happen is a good question, and a lot of it depends on how quickly all that development rolls out. Thank you. Um, I agree almost everything Don said there. It's, uh, it's not imminent, for sure, um, unless some private organization steps up to it and makes that investment. And as Don said, it requires a certain amount of ridership in order for any private organization to continue. So we did have a try for, with a nonprofit organization, uh, and it failed uh, simply because the ridership wasn't there. And um, so after our transportation management plan, there is a possibility, I suppose, that there will be a plan put in place for the township to fund something. But I don't see anything happening privately uh, before then. And uh, so it's a matter of will the taxpayer pay for it? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this question is directed only at Kelly. Uh, why were you not conflicted when you broke the tie at Council supporting the Haylock Young Blood development on South River Road, knowing that one of the developers had financially contributed to your 2014 election campaign? All right, interesting. Um, that's uh, everything that happened um, as far as the donations that I received in 2014. Um, I, ref I um, went by all requirements and, and made sure that those were published just the way we, um, we, we all have to do at the end of every election. So I went through and I did what was required there. Um, and I just wanted to point out, I don't break ties, I vote. So I vote on everything. Um, and that's the only way that you get accountability from a mayor. I don't just break ties. So I get, I'm getting a little tired of saying that I broke a tie. I have the same vote as any of the councillors here, and I don't break ties. So I voted uh, because I thought that, would, that subdivision was in the best interest of, of this municipality. And, um, and, I, and I still believe that. Um, if we would have left it up to um, the tribunal, we would have re we resulted in something that was a whole lot worse than what we got. Thank you. Uh, directed to Kim Jefferson and Fred Morris, and we'll have Fred answer first. In the new Ford administration, with an attitude of open for business, what will you do as a representative to challenge the Ontario government so that Nestle will not get the permit to take water badly needed for our township? I have long said right from the beginning that I am opposed to the presence of Nestle in Centre Wellington. I think our water is a public trust. It belongs to the community. It's needed not only now, but it's needed for our growth into the future. And so when we were at AMO this year with uh, Kelly, myself, and our CAO, Andy Goldie, we sat with the new environment minister and made it quite clear to him that the community was committed against the idea of Nestle operating within Centre Wellington and that we ask for an extension of the moratorium. I will continue to lobby for that. I will continue to press the new government in any way I can, with any minister possible, to let them know that the community is solidly against the presence of an international bottling company. Yeah, sure. Um so I guess the, the tail end is, uh, what will you do to challenge the Ont Ontario government so that Nestle will not get the permit to take water badly needed for our township? All righty. Um, I think on this. I'm not totally qualified, I guess, because I haven't been here for all of the Nestle dealings with our council. I can only go by what I've heard in the media, and I do understand that Centre Wellington does not agree with Nestle coming in. Ford government is a new government, so I do understand that we've been petitioning and talking to the Liberal government that was the past government, and letting them know that we did not want Nestle in the area doing water taking from our 
system. But we also have to look that we need a sustainable water supply system as well, especially with all the development coming in. Um, I'm willing to work with our council and our county council and anything else that comes up to approach the government and to let them know what our Center Wellington residents want and do not want in their district. Thank you. Uh, this is a county question um, directed to Ross Chalk and Alan Hans. Uh, so rural infrastructure, infrastructure of course includes road, roads and bridges and we hear a lot about uh, replacement of roads and bridges and the partnership between the county and the lower tier municipality. Uh, fiber is now in many of the urban centers. In internet and broadband in the rural, rural area is uh, in a significant deficit. What are you going to do to, to deal with the broadband deficit in the rural areas? And I'll have Ross start first. It's true there's an internet. You have to use the mic, please. It's true there's a bandwidth de deficit. I live in a rural area. I always have bell dial-up. I don't have bell dial-up anymore. I've gone some other ways. I now have, what do we call this, internet through the air. Um, but in a rural area, it is expensive to have bandwidth. Governments are going to have to assist the rural areas. Okay? We need help from upper tier. We need help from provincial government. If we could get some of the money back that when they, what's, how do I say this? Farm tax rebate. Okay? We used to get 100% of the farm tax. Now we don't. The farmer's still in the same position he's always been but 75% of the farm tax now goes to the province, okay? If we had that kind of money, we could fix a heck of a lot of problems. Thank you. Thanks. Well, the internet is productivity these days. Without it, farmers can't succeed. You need that kind of technology to run your farms, drive your tractors, to make your farms as efficient and productive and profitable as possible. And your profits don't really go to Centre Wellington so much as they do the province. So I agree with Mr. Chalk. We need the provincial government to get on board with helping increase the network for broadband so that our farmers can be more successful. And more successful means they're paying more taxes, which goes back into the pot to help, again, expand this network so that everyone can benefit and make a, a stronger agricultural sector locally and across the province. Thank you. So this is to the mayoral candidates, and I will have um, Kelly answer first. As the township continues to grow and we get closer to requiring a full-time fire department, um, how large do you see the fire department growing? And what do you think the Township of Center Wellington can afford? I think that's a good question because uh, that's something that we always have to talk about. And we just finished the Fire Services Master Plan, which uh, sets out our uh, priorities for the next 10 years. Um, I've been told by other municipalities that I work with, you st stick with a part-time or a volunteer fire department as long as you can, because that's the, that's the best approach for a small and medium-sized towns. Um, and I think we're all really proud of our CW Fire um, Department. Um, so we, we have that plan in place. Uh, we just increased the complement uh, last year, and we're just uh, filling that this year. Um, so I think we increased it by 10 to 12 uh, different firefighters, so I think that's good. Um, we're, we're making sure that we can get to fires in a timely way, um, and that was part of this, uh, long, this fire services master plan. So as long as we can continue to uh, provide the services and provide the safety to residents of Center Wellington, I think we should be con considering staying with this kind of model for a long time. It's very rare for me to say this, but I do agree with Kelly on this. <laughs> so, you, you, you witnessed a moment in time. Thank you. Um, yeah, we have a great fire department, really do. And, and, I, and 
I, I concur wholeheartedly. We want to maintain our volunteer system of firefighting for as long as we can. And certainly, I don't think Senator Wellington should be in any great hurry to, to create a full-time fire service because we do have some great uh, firefighters in our complement. Uh, I was privy uh, not that long ago to watch them in, accident, or in action. I was driving up Highway 6 near Enneville and I saw a head-on collision and I stopped and I waited for them to arrive and, and I just sat back there and stood back there. No one was hurt. I should say that, but no one was hurt. But I, I just stood back and watched them in action and they are as professional as they come and I applaud them loudly. Okay, this will be the last question before closing remarks. And uh, surprise, it's to the mayoral candidates. <laughs> we will have uh, Fred start. Um, what are you prepared to do if elected to bring industrial jobs to the Center Wellington area? Well, first of all, let me talk about the, the word industrial jobs. I think, I think we need to be broader in our scope when we talk about industrial jobs. I think, I think we've got to look at business sectors. And as I said earlier in my comments, I think what, what I want to do is identify, first of all, what does Centre Wellington want and need? What kind of businesses do we want and need? Do we want high smokestacks? I don't think so. We're not going to get them anyway. Then we've got to define our competitive edge. What is it that businesses that we have to offer businesses that nobody else can offer? And we need to figure that out first and then proactively go out and seek the businesses we want. I, I think we've got some tremendous strengths here. A new hospital, health sciences, sciences, that's a great sector to go after. The IT business, we're just within 30, 40 minutes from the technological triangle. Let's go after those businesses. And then lastly, I think we're in a great position for agribusinesses. We've got lots of farming community around us, and we should seek those kind of businesses. Well, I, I, I do want to continue on this theme of agreeing with Fred, because we've done it once, and that's the first time in a while. Um, but only to a point. I know that agri-food is a, a very good uh, a business to go through, but in my experience with the governments, um, they're notoriously bad for picking what industry should come to town. Um, we have to be as flexible as possible. We have to create an environment for all kinds of different businesses. We can't try to, we can't try to pick a, a very specific sector, because we're not that good at that. We have to make sure that the development fees are as low as possible. We have to be competitive. Uh, we have to offer incentives when we need to. And uh, we have to then go out and, and sell our community. Um, we, have a, we have a lot, and a lot of businesses come to Centre Wellington uh, because they love the quality of life here. They love our downtowns, and that's a huge selling feature. So we have to, and we have to get land. I, want, I commit that uh, in, the, in the next term of council, I want to see one new business park in Centre Wellington. Um, and that's really, really important. We need to have areas for people to expand in Centre Wellington and to move to Centre Wellington. Thank you. So we're going to do closing statements in reverse order of the opening statements. So we will start with the English uh, School Board and we will start with Barb. Okay. So, you know, as I, as I wrap my opportunity here tonight, I want to say thank you again for being here and for joining us. I am the voice of your children, not just here in this role. I've been working with your children and your friends' children for well over a decade. I work in the schools. I have my own business that is dedicated to serving children and their families. And in many cases, I don't charge. When a child is in need, I believe every child should have. My role as your trustee is just an extension of who and what I am right here in our very own community. I am the voice for your children. When it comes time to vote, I want to remind you, a lot of people don't think that, if, or think that if you don't have children at home, that you don't need to worry about voting for the trustee. Believe me, we are looking for your votes with or without children. Your tax money is part of the dollars that I so carefully and so seriously take responsibility for. En français, porte un petit fois. Si tu tiens des enfants qui veulent apprendre français, s'il vous plaît, votez pour moi. Si tu si ça de langue un langue seconde c'est important pour vous vote pour moi. 
It's that important. It's in. It's crucial. If you care about a second language for your child, keep me there. I speak three languages, and I absolutely fight for it. I go to the spec ed table. I go to the French immersion table. I go to the tough questions, and I face them. Not once have I received a phone call, email, text, or a person coming to visit me with a problem that they needed taken care of that I not only addressed immediately, I addressed effectively and never once had an issue left uncared for. That's what I do as your trustee. I am a politician. As much as I'll be it differently than the rest of the people at these table, let me, or at the rest of the people at this table. I ask for your vote on October, on October 22nd. Je suis là pour vous. I am here for you. Thank you so much and have a great night. Thank you. Well, um, that was some great words from Barb, and I want to stress that uh, I really think that she has done a great job for the last four years. Uh, I haven't been at the um, school board meetings, but from everything I hear, she is a fantastic representative for us. And when we are looking to vote for our representatives, we need to look at both what they've done and what they can do. And well, I don't necessarily want you to vote for me, I do want you to vote for me, but I really want you to make sure that you understand the values, the things that I can bring to the table, and what Barbara can bring to the table. Because if what you, are, what, value, what you value in a trustee is what Barb espouses, then really I want you to vote for her. Because really we are representatives of the community, and we want to make sure that your voices are heard. Uh, I only have a minute to go over the things I... Um, that I can bring to the table, and I won't go a ton into that because um, really you can get more by, by reading more about it and reading more about what Barb can bring. Uh, from a standpoint of uh, languages, je parle français aussi, pendant mes. Sorry, my French is a little rusty, and it's interesting. Um, I did grow up in Quebec, and I should speak French a lot better than I do today. But it is a, a, an interesting point, because when you do stop using it, you do lose it. So um, the French immersion programs that we do have are very important for our children in that. They get immersed into the language and learn it, and if they choose to, can continue to um, continue it going on. And as we look at that, Sorry, I seem to have lost my train of thought, but um, I just wanted to thank, again, everyone for coming here. I am a rookie to this uh, political scene, um, and I, I really look forward to, to representing you as a school board trustee. Thank you so much. So County Ward 6, Diane Ballantyne. It's difficult to really get to know anybody in these two minutes, so here's a very little tiny snapshot. 25 years ago, I began my career at Queen's Park in Toronto. Since then, I've worked in education, received a Provincial Human Rights Award, completed my master's, and I've written for CBC and TV Ontario. I was elected to the Ontario College of Teachers Governing Council, the largest professional regulatory body in the province, and there I chair several statutory committees, as well as adjudicate on discipline issues. Some of my community leadership has included supporting Save Our Water's efforts by bringing UN Water Advisor Maud Barlow to town, raising tens of thousands of dollars for numerous initiatives, including the Fort Mac fires, as well as our local food bank, and I founded the CW Community Dinner Project, which was mentioned earlier tonight. I'm proud of my career and the community work that I've done, and I'm grateful for all the insights that I have received from them. And the one insight that I would like to leave with you tonight is that our community of Center Wellington holds the financial responsibility for more than $200 million of infrastructure, and we only get to use 27% of the tax dollars paid, while the county is building $6 million libraries, palatial garages, as well as driving brand new vehicles. While their overspending continues, Center Wellington is left managing an almost impossible infrastructure deficit. This tells me that the county has lost its focus. Their lack of a strategic plan and an archaic budgeting process hurts our community. Yes, on paper, they are fiscally responsible, but that is actually to a fault because the county's purpose is to look after the second tier. That's us, the lower tiers. 
The county's role is not to hold back hundreds of millions of dollars in reserves and say that they're doing a good job. Their purpose is to serve the ratepayers' interests, and they are not. This is wrong, it needs to change, and I would like to be your voice to bring that home. We need new leadership for our changing community. Please vote for Diane Ballantyne for Ward 6 on October 22nd. Thank you. Thank you. Sean Waters. Thank you. Um, yeah, you can go in and guns a blazing and, uh, but, uh, and, and try to say, hey, this is the way it needs to be now. Uh, but that's not really how it works. It's, you have to, it has to be a collegial uh, approach to uh, the county and also the local. We lo work, work uh, tremendously with the local folks. Um, uh, we have a, a great relationship with them. The library thing, uh, that one actually really bothers me because we're seven equal partners in the county. We, uh, we decided as a, as a whole, as a county, this even before I was on county council, that we were going to do this library program or renewal. It's the envy of, uh, of the province. We have 14 stellar libraries in our, our community. And you know, and I heard this library argument four years ago and how, you know, and we have this tremendous jewel in Fergus, and there's no reason why Aaron should have a, a tremendous jewel as well. So there are equals, there are equals. Where we will have issues uh, in the future, and I, I brought this to, uh, to council, is governance. As Centre Wellington moves towards 50% of the population, we don't have 50% of the representation. And that's gonna be a real tough one. And I know uh, at times we look around and we have small communities here, but that's one we're gonna to have to deal with. And that, that, I see that as becoming part of term of council. And I've brought that up before, and I've really plugged that with the, the warden, and then definitely that one's coming in. So if you're looking for a sort of quality of use and, and how your money is being spent, that's where it's gonna come through. It's gonna come through a situation where we have dialogue and we work together. But if we're going in there and we're going to try to say sort of blistering things against each other, forget it. You'll be parked at the side of the road. I think my longevity has been there and through this community is because I work with people. And, 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 and I've proven it many times over with the results that I've done. Anyways, appreciate you coming out. Look forward to talking to you later. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, representatives from County Ward 4, uh, first to speak will be Ross Chalk. Seniors make up a significant portion of the population. And each year as the population ages, we have more seniors that live on a fixed income. An increase in property taxes places an undue burden on them. With my accounting background and business experience, I believe that I will be a critical part of the budgeting process and financial review as the county moves forward and becomes a more efficient operation. As a past chairman of the Finance Committee, I have experience overseeing the budgeting process and have encouraged long-term forecasting and better departmental reporting. The end goal is to keep tax increases to a minimum. Common sense needs to prevail. For Wellington County to grow and prosper, it will need guidance. I would like to offer my accounting skills and business abilities in order to make this happen. An opportunity exists for the residents of Wellington County to participate in the direction their county should take in the coming years. This opportunity is yours simply by exercising your right to vote. You, the voter, should look at all the candidates running for office and build the team that you think will produce the best results for Wellington County. For business sense, for common sense, for experience, vote Ross Chalk. Thank you. Thank you. Second to speak will be Jake Bowman. Again, thank you for hosting this. Um, I have two, I'd like to have two little comments about what came forward. And one is agriculture how important the, uh, the bridges are on the far side of uh, Fergus. There were three bridges in a row. I, was, I had to go all the way around through Bellwood in order to get across a very simple bridge for us. So it was kind of an inconvenience. So I can appreciate the need for a priority of bridges and when they should be done. The one the Queen Mary, it's, it, I can understand as well. The other one is the fiber optics. Um, 
it's important that we have, but it's not only the farming community, it's everyone who lives in the rural area does have trouble with it as well. So I think that's an interesting concept, but I would not leave it only to farmers uh, because others have the problem. My desire is to be your county councillor. Uh, support me on October 22nd so I can re so I can give back to this community. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, next to speak is Penny. Ward 4 is composed of several communities, some larger than others. Each of these communities is unique in their own strengths and concerns. Water is one necessary element that we need to protect, and the environment must be taken into consideration. Cooperation is also necessary to communities to move forward. Cooperations between the communities, cooperation between the wards, and cooperation between the townships. While we should preserve the past, it doesn't mean that we should live in the past. Communities need to embrace the present and future and move forward with the trends that make businesses successful and ultimately make the communities successful. In a survey for business retention and expansion, 51% of the businesses interviewed had trouble hiring. One reason being too few applicants and the lack of experience and skills. According to the Economic Development Strategic Plan from 2012, we are part of the Greater Golden Horseshoe Region and can expect to accommodate 27,000 new residents and 11,750 new jobs by 2031. And in the last six years, these statistics may have changed. It will be an exciting time to meet these challenges and be able to fulfill employer requirements within our localities. As I said earlier at the beginning, um, I have been a Girl Guide for many years, and part of the Girl Guide promise is to do my best. And that is what I'll do as County Councillor for the residents of County Ward 4. If I don't have an answer for someone's concern, or I don't know a council situation well, then I will make sure that I investigate and learn. Then I'll be in a position to make informed decisions that will be for the benefit of the county, Ward 4 and you, the constituents. I'm asking for your support in the next month's election, and thank you very much for the opportunity to speak with you. Thank you. <laughs> next to speak is Alan Hans. Taking out the competition today. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the biggest threat to Senator Wellington and Wellington County isn't personality clashes between your councillors. It's your provincial government. Mm. They set the rules, and increasingly they're being set to achieve re-election, or some bizarre personal vendetta. <laughs> Not what's in our best interest. <laughs> we need a strong county council to work closely with our local MPPs to hold the attention of this provincial government. To ensure that your property taxes aren't asked to cover ever more expenses locally while funds are withdrawn to invest in the GTA. If you remember anything from this debate, I want you to remember this. A $500,000 house assessed at $500,000 in the GTA pays about $3,200 in property taxes. The rare house in Centre Wellington assessed at $500,000 pays $5,600. That's $2,400 difference. Now some of that is because the city is a denser place, they have more people in a smaller area. But a large chunk of that is because of the political muscle they can flex when they're asking the provincial and federal governments for money. The county needs to come up with a plan to counter that influence, or we will increasingly be paying for our services here in Wellington County and subsidizing those in the GTA. <laughs> Such action is going to require a different kind of councillor than what we have elected in the past. A councillor who can energize others and lead charge for change with tenacity and dogged determination. When, when, when you're given the opportunity to vote, I ask that you vote for Alan Hans. Vote for enthusiasm, vote for youth, vote for change. It's about time. Thank you.
Uh, last to speak is Wayne Baker. To cite an example of both infrastructure capacity and tax efficiency, I'd like to point out the Teviot Dale intersection. The estimated cost to change the intersection from its st former stoplight intersection to the new roundabout is almost $2 million. The former status of the intersection was functioning very well, which in my and many other opinions had not reached its capacity of functionality, hence infrastructure capacity. Had the county left the intersection as it was, there would have been an extra $2 million to use in a more effective manner, or heaven forbid, allow for a slight decrease or more likely a smaller increase in our mill rate next year hence creating tax efficiency. I'm seeing trends to our taxation that are concerning. Did you know it took 164 years for our taxes to get to the level they are at today? Also, did you know that the 10-year budget, is calling, or the county budget, is calling for a tax increase of just over 50% but by the end of those two, 10 years? In other words, if your county share of the tax bill is $2,000 today, and it took 164 years to get there, your county's share of the tax bill will be $3,000 and it only took 10 years to get to that point. This is also assuming the assessed value of your home does not increase. These are exponential numbers and even if your income increases at the same exponential rate, your standard of living will be less in 10 years than it is today because of a neat little fact that taxes are not tied to your cost of living. In, my, in closing, in my opinion, the way the system works is a lot like a fox asking a farmer if he can guard the hen house. In this analogy, you, the taxpaying public, are the farmers. Us candidates here tonight are the foxes, and the hen house is the tax dollars collected by the municipality. Your job is to pick the fox or the candidate you trust the most. <laughs> I hope I've gained your trust. Thank you for this opportunity. Uh, from Township Ward 2, first to speak will be Kim Jefferson. All right. Well, first off, I'd like to thank everybody for all the wonderful questions. If um, anybody wants to discuss further, because I know we only had a minute to give our answers, and if I wasn't clear, you're welcome to reach out to me. You can find me at my store over in Fergus, or invite me out for coffee or a beer, if you uh, so like. So Mary Lloyd went there, and I'm going to go there as well. <laughs> you might have noticed that I'm the only female sitting at the table for oh, our yeah. municipal, oh, municipal. Oh, municipal. <laughs> council. Thanks, ladies. Got my back. I believe that as a woman, I would bring a unique and much-needed perspective to council, and that I will use my talents to be able to represent my constituents at the municipal level to help move the township forward and to make changes if need be. What I need you to know is that I am a hardworking, level-headed, and willing to learn. I understand and anticipate a steep learning curve for myself if elected to our local council. But I have the time and energy to do the research and the hard work that will be needed for this position. I'm willing to work with other members of council to come up with the best possible outcomes for our community. And what I need to know is what can I do for you? What can I do to represent you at the council table? I'm accessible, willing to listen, and I want to do my part to help CW be a strong and vibrant community. But I need you to talk to me. Tell me what you think, and then we can figure out what we need to do together. We need to take ownership of Centre Wellington's future direction and set policy that takes us where we want to go. Thanks so much for coming out tonight. Thanks, Kim. Next to speak will be Kirk. Did everyone see the front page story about the Haylock Youngblood development on Centre Road in yesterday's newspaper? Yeah. I'm really curious how this story that was not considered newsworthy when it was current seven weeks ago has suddenly become front page news the day before the All Candidates meeting. <clears throat> the timing and the omission of significant facts was quite disturbing. It omits the fact that the mayor and staff for over two years assured smart growth of Aura Plus Fergus that they were aligned on issues. But near the end of the process, the municipality decided without notice or discussion that they weren't aligned. It omits the fact that Mayor Linton assured SGENF representatives a concept plan from early November was just a starting point, but then went on to improve it, approve it. Omitted is the fact 
that the proponent's original site plan only included a maximum of 767 units. And after quote, tough negotiations, the municipal county team suggested a maximum of 817 units. That's over 20 units per hectare. The township-wide growth management target is 16 units per hectare across the urban centers. The story omits the fact that growth management study that cost the taxpayers of $75,000 recommended a density of 12 units per hectare for the Elock Youngblood development based on site constraints. It omits the fact that the mayor and three members of council voted in favor of this, in favor of this negotiated agreement without ever seeing or hearing the SGENF expert testimony. How can this be considered due diligence? Unfortunately, this story is indicative of the information provided to the public throughout the last four years. The US military coined the phrase for this called perception management. I just call it lack of transparency. Thank you, and I look forward to your vote on October 22nd. Thank you. Thank you, Kirk. First to speak in uh, Township Ward 1 is Ian McRae. First of all, thank you everyone for spending your evening with all of us. It's greatly appreciated. Um, I just recently retired after a successful career with a world-renowned consulting engineering firm where I held various positions, both technical and human resources, and as well as leadership and management positions. So I bring quite a few skill sets to the role. Most importantly, I was well noted for my ability to understand both the management side as well as the employee side in looking for con building consensus and cooperation on both sides. That is something I bring to this position as well, is I feel very strongly that in order to be a leader is you need to be out walking and asking the people who are most impacted by the various issues before them, seeking to listen, then to understand, and then to either resolve or educate why something cannot be done. That's why I put my picture on the poster, so that people would see me out there, they could stop and ask me and share with me whatever their concerns are. I've been out walking around, meeting people, listening to their stories, and I found it very interesting and insightful, and I'm using that information to help me to help you. So, please consider me for Ward 1, when it's time to vote. Thank you. Next to speak in Township Ward 1 is Don Fisher. Elections are fundamentally about the future. Our community faces many challenges. We must ensure that the growth we are experiencing is well planned and sensitive to the kind of community we are, while creating the diverse range of housing forms necessary to meet our density obligations and provide affordable housing for all. The new council will be asked to approve a growth management strategy for the township, together with urban design guidelines and development standards to implement this strategy. How we deal with growth is perhaps the most important challenge council and citizens face in the coming years. We need to develop a coherent economic development strategy and plan to complement our growth strategy. We want our residents to work as well as live here. We need to review our relationship with Wellington County. Even though we have two tiers of municipal government, there is only one taxpayer. We owe it to that taxpayer to provide the most efficient and productive form of municipal government possible. Even though we have been successful in increasing the transparency of the township organization, we still face the challenge of achieving a higher level of public engagement. We have yet to find, but must continue to look for, those methods of communication with our residents that generate maximum response and maximum feedback. The challenge then will be how best to incorporate that feedback into decision making. Finally, and above all, we need to protect our irreplaceable groundwater from large-scale commercial exploitation that returns no tangible economic benefit to this municipality while threatening our quality of life and future economic prosperity. The current council is unanimously committed to doing all it can to save our water, and I will work to ensure the next one does as well. I have worked in municipal government all my career, as a professional and as an elected official. I have the knowledge, experience, and vision to face the challenges and capitalize on the opportunities that lie before us. Difficult and impactful decisions will have to be made by the next council. I ask for your support to continue to help move this community forward. Thank you. Thank you, Don. 
First to speak in the mayoral candidates is Kelly Linton. Well, you've heard a lot of interesting things tonight. And some of the tax-related comments remind me of Mark Twain's quote, never let the truth get in the way of a good story. When it comes to choosing your next mayor, you have a very real choice. And my pitch is pretty simple. You can trust me to do the things they say I'll do. I will continue to lead a council that invests your tax dollars on rebuilding your backbone infrastructure. We will rebuild 12 more bridges in the next four years. Continue our town pavement management program. Continue our rural roads rebuilding program. The 2% rebuilding, bridge rebuilding capital levy will be reduced in 2021 and eliminated in 2022. We will continue to drive jobs and investment to CW. We've already reduced development charges. Next, we'll be working hard with the new council to cre create at least one new business park in Center Wellington, creating even more jobs and long-term investment. We'll continue to grow the right ways. We'll be implementing our long-term studies when it comes to uh, water master plan and when it comes to our transportation master plan and our urban design standards. And you can be sure that I will continue to invest a ton of time in communicating with you not just during the election campaign. We'll also establish CW's first ever youth council as an official advisory committee in the first three months of a new council. The ball is already rolling on this and I've spoken to over 150 uh, high school students to get their ideas on how can we make this effort a success. That's a gap that we have right now. You do not need somebody who says the right things during a, beefy le a brief election campaign. You need a mayor who has demonstrated from day one that he is committed to connecting with his community, he does what he promises, and has what it takes to get things done with your tax dollars. Thanks for taking the time out of your busy schedules today, and thanks for your questions. They're very challenging. And thanks for the Chamber for hosting. I encourage you uh, on October the 22nd to vote Linton, and I'll stick around for a bit if you feel free to connect with me. Thank you. Thank you. Next mayoral candidate, Fred Morris. I gotta get set up here, so. All right. Thank you everyone for coming out tonight and thank you to the chamber and to the media and to the folks at home that have taken the time to watch this tonight. This, folks, is a very, very important election. And it's an election because there's two different visions. If you talk to both of us, there's two different visions that come from each of us tonight. And so I want to just touch on what I believe, because I think what a person believes goes to the core of his character, and character is what leads to action. So I believe this. I believe our residents deserve an honest and fair hearing when council is making important decisions. You are not squeaky wheels, and I will not treat you as such. I believe we need a community engagement charter. Town hall meetings should be interactive, and not just used to disseminate propaganda. I believe council should be open and transparent. No more secret meetings and no more closed door deal making. I believe in positive, smart growth for the community. Growth should be beneficial to our community and not problematic. I believe our water is a public trust and must be protected and preserved for future use. I believe we should preserve and build upon our small town feel. I believe Senator Wellington needs more jobs there is a right way and a wrong way to help create jobs in Centre Wellington. I will do it the right way. If you believe what I believe, then vote Fred Morris for mayor on October 22nd. That concludes our closing statements, and I just want to just quickly thank all of the people that are sitting here for putting their names forward. That's It's not an easy task to come out and have impromptu questions and have to get up and, and answer questions, and then it has been an interesting uh, political week, and I, I was worried that I was going to have to use the words of our Honourable Ted Arnott and uh, clear the balcony. <laughs> so I'm glad I didn't have to do that. Thank you very much. And thank you, Janet, for moderating, keeping us focused and on track. Your continued support and generous giving of your time, knowledge, and talents within our community are so appreciated. Thank you for helping us with this process tonight. On behalf of the Centre Wellington Chamber of Commerce, we thank all of the candidates for their civic engagement and thank all of you for attending tonight's session. Once again, thank you to our local media for covering this evening's event. Remember to vote Monday, October 22nd, and good night. <laughs>